We meet Harry in this season in a really difficult time. He's battling his own demons, but I also think he's grown up a lot because he has these people around him who are, you know, not letting him get away with stuff. Hello, Mother. You kind of want to not like Rabina because she's so steeped in her class, you know, but you can't help liking her at the same time. She's got emotions buried. She's kind of battling it all a bit this time round. Harry said you were afraid of strong emotion. I just disapprove of it. Good afternoon, Rubina. Rubina thought her life would be very linear and there would be no frayed edges and no mess. And there's frayed edges and mess everywhere and Harry's the cause of all of that. A big part of him dealing with his trauma has been running away. His turmoil has come from a place of self-loathing. He's trying to find ways to escape. Being part of the war gives him something to fight for. At the beginning of series one, Harry and Kasia have fallen deeply in love. And they get married. And you are safe now. They've had a year of incredibly horrific circumstances. That's changed their relationship because they're not the same people. Kasia fought in the resistance after her parents were killed. She was rescued by Harry. Now in season two, we find them meeting his mom and uh, Kasia is reunited with her brother Jan. Kasia! It's a beautiful experience to him to meet his sister again. He has missed her so much. He wants to reunite the family, but it's not so easy. Kasia has PTSD and so many difficult things happened in Warsaw. She wants to go back and be a soldier, which she feels she is now. Being in Manchester is like being an animal in a cage, pretty unbearable. So at the end of series one, we leave Lois having just given birth. She said yes to a proposal and you're left wondering where her life is going to take her from here. We start series two in quite a different place. She no longer has a fiancé and she also doesn't have a father. She is a young, grieving mother with a baby that she's struggling to have maternal feelings for. Hello, Harry. Where we find her in episode one, this mental space that Lois is in, she doesn't have the capacity to hate him anymore. I think it's a big indicator of Lois's growth and maturity that she is able to think more about what's important to her and her family. We dig deeper especially in series two, into female roles in the war effort. She feels alive because she's doing something that's distracting her from everything that she's not quite facing up to. At the end of the first season, she's at the American Hospital in Paris. She's Jewish and her papers are forged and she wants to fight against the Nazis. And now, at the beginning of the season, I'm still at the American hospital. I help uh, prisoners of war to escape. She's strong, caring, extremely brave, and she has a deep sense of justice, and she has conviction, and she has a mission to save people. That's why I admire her. Albert, we met him in season one in the jazz center of Paris. He's a saxophonist. He met Webster, with whom he fell in love. And then unfortunately, he was thrown into a camp at the, the end of season one, which is where we pick up in season two. He's in an internment camp and sort of helping others escape. We last saw Stan being rescued on the beaches of Dunkirk. And now we're seeing him in North Africa, hence the uh, sandy look I've got going on here. Stan's really good fun to play. He doesn't let the occasion get the better of him or allow it to get the better of the troops. He tries his best to find the humour and find levity in dark times. Good looking bastard, isn't he? I think you might have been in the desert too long, Stan. What this show does really well is show you different parts of World War II that you aren't used to seeing on TV. All of it has come from real life accounts. That I think is really special, that the bits that might seem slightly far-fetched are all real.